Okay, so at this point, you should have worked through the, the in-class exercise on your own. Um, this is my, um, my take on it, and uh, I'll, I'll talk you through it. And so watch what I do, um, compare to what you've done, and, and see if you have any questions. You can send those to me. Uh, this exercise uh, will have two parts. First part will be the data class uh, automobile that we'll, we'll deal with today. And then in lab one, we will expand this to include a wrapper uh, class. All of this is, is review from uh, CS1, so you should know it already, but you know, let's, let's review and make sure we're on the same, same page. So for starters, we're going to create our, our Java project called Auto Dealer. Uh, with this package. I'm just going to copy that and cheat and use that as we go through and automobile will be in that model package. So let's do that first. Double check. Oops. Wrong one. There we go. Project is auto dealer and the that's the package. sure everything is correct here looks good let's just avoid creating a, a module at this point since we're not talking about modules yet all right we're going to create our package in here And we're going to create a new class in it called Automobile. And this being CS2, we're not forgetting the stuff we've done in CS1. So immediately, immediately go ahead and uh, put in a uh, a class comment for Automobile uh, with a description. So something like um, data class to encapsulate information about an automobile. Okay, I think that takes care of this slide. All right, we need data members with the following um, of the following types, uh, make, model, year, miles, and price. So uh, make will have a get, model will have a get, year will have a get, miles and price will both have a getter and a setter. So let's uh, make those attributes. Uh, make and model should be strings, year should be an int, miles should be an int, and price should be a double for now. are private, of course. Uh, int for the year. An int for the miles. And a double for the price. All right, let's generate our getters and setters. Start by generating a constructor using the fields. Uh, one for each is good. And don't forget your Java docs for those. something like um, Honda C uh, Civic if it were a Honda or um, 
you know, a Bronco if it were a Ford. Your Now, um, this being a constructor, um, we need to, um, you know, think about um, preconditions and, and post conditions of these sorts of things. Um, just continuing using the the format we did in, in CS1, um, we do an at precondition, and I'm going to put each one of these on a thing. Um, Make should not equal null and make should not equal the empty string and model should not equal null and model should not equal the empty string. Year we can do whatever we want for year. Usually 1970 is a good uh, a good year uh, to start with. So year must be greater than or equal to something. We'll say 1970 works as pretty well. Uh, miles must be greater than or equal to zero. And price must be greater than or equal to zero, zero. Post conditions are going to get kind of hairy here, but um, we'll put them in anyway. So, um, and year equals year and get miles. So all those things should should satisfy our post conditions. Uh, all that for for our automobile. And let's just go ahead and um, let's handle our preconditions here. You know, I am going to refactor this out. There's and there's a good reason we did the getters and setters here first. I'm gonna. Um, I'm actually going to make setters for everything and make these three private, and you'll see a reason why in just a second. So let's uh, hold off on the constructor for a moment, and let's generate our getters and setters. We're going to do everything for all of them. Uh, for now, I'm going to do them as public, but I'm going to change that in just a second. Okay, so all the getters need to be public, but our... And just to save myself some work, I'm going to do that. Redo that, and... going to put in the method comments. Forgot to do that part. That'll help. So only miles and price have, have a public setter. So we're going to make the make model and year setters private. are private we can take away their Java docs there we go and instead of these items I'm gonna 
do this. This dot set make make. This dot set model to model. This dot set year. This dot set miles. And this dot set price. And the reason I'm doing this now is so that um, we don't repeat ourselves. So if I have a setter for each one of these, I can use my setter to validate my um, uh, preconditions here and not do it in both places. So for set make, um, if make equals null, for a new illegal argument, exception should not be null. And if make dot is empty, oops, that makes it make. Throw new illegal argument exception. do the same things for setting the model um, for the year let's see not this dot year if year is less than 1970 Throw new legal argument exception. Should it be greater than or equal to nineteen seventy. We're going to do a similar thing for the miles. And for the price, um, now I, for time, I'm not going to go through and do everything. But um, make sure that all of your public um, getters and setters uh, have everything they need. So uh, look at price, just as an example. So it should have a description, gets the price of the auto, returns the price of the auto. And for, for a setter, we should have a precondition and a post condition since we're dealing with this. Um, and a, the at param should be done. Um, the new price of the auto. There we go. And you should do that for all of your public getters and setters. You don't have to do it for the private one. So I think this takes care of our slide here. We've got our data members with the givers and setters um, and we have our constructor with its preconditions and post conditions and we'll keep doing that okay so now we need a two string method that um, returns the make model year and mileage um, as a string okay let's do that
don't have to do this, but I, I like putting at override in front of, of two strings. That's that tells um, certain tools uh, what's going on here. Uh, so the a two string is public return string. Of course, the name is two string there, and it expects us to return something. So in this case, we're going to return um, this dot make. Plus that. Actually, let's let's do a formatted. You've seen the other stuff, but um, let's try it this way. Oh, those are. The D there, and that's uh, hopefully a float. If I'm remembering my specifiers, this dot make, this dot model, this dot miles, and this dot oh year and mileage. My bad. And I realized, looking at this slide, I should have made my mileage a double. So let me go back and fix that. There. And that's going to cause me some errors here. Actually, double miles. There. I think that fixes all of it. There we go. Um, so uh, using string dot format here, string space string space uh, integer, which unfortunately we use D's for integers, uh, space uh, percent F for the float. Uh, we'll see how that comes out. And I hope I'm remembering that correctly. If not, I will correct myself later. All right, so now we're going to do unit tests for the constructor. And this slide talks about how we organize our tests. Um, every When we do unit tests in this course, uh, the format is going to be the main package of, uh, of the project, followed by the word test, followed by the class under test. Um, and then that under that package we will have um, test classes that uh, reflect the name of the method or constructor that we are uh, we are testing so um, for the automobile we'll, we'll start out with capital T test constructor uh, since that's what we're doing right now um, and typically the name of the the test class is capital T test followed by the name of the method that we're testing. Um, and then within the class, the test class itself, we will have tests that reflect the specific name, that we're, the specific thing that we're testing. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll see some of those in just a minute. Don't forget when you're writing a test method to follow the three A's. A range is where you set up things. Usually you're instantiating um, the objects you're, you're going to test, but you may set up some other stuff as well. Uh, so we set those up, we initialize them. Act, we call the method or constructor that, that we're testing. Um, oftentimes we're saving the return value if we have to. And then assert, we write one or more assert statements that check that the data that we get back from our um, you know, from our test method or our constructor um, is, is correct. Um, here's an example of what you would do if you're uh, doing the fine ma max of a, of a statistics course or of a statistics, statistics class. Um, we're also going to use uh, this notion of multiple asserts. Um, in earlier versions of JUnit, uh, 
Jane at four and, and previous, um, if we needed to do multiple assertions, we had to write one um, assert statement for each one. Um, and because of that, the first one of those asserts to fail ends the test method. The rest of the asserts don't get checked, um, which is not horrible, but it's nice to, to find out, um, it'd be nice to check all the assertions to see specifically which ones fail. Um, and we can do that in JUnit 5 with this assert all. And here's an example of how we can do that. Um, I'm actually going to use this um, this this piece of uh, of code uh, directly in my uh, my test class. So I'm going to copy that. But if uh, if you use look at this, we have an assert all, and um, we use our empty lambda um, thing, which we'll talk about later on in, in the course. Um, empty parentheses, arrow, and um, then we can start doing assert equals or assert true or whatever traditional assert statements we've seen before, all of those inside the parameter of assert all. By doing this, we actually will check every one of these uh, assert equals statements, um, and one or more of them may fail, but we're going to check all of them, and we'll get some feedback about which ones. Uh, I'm back. Apologies for the, the break in the... Uh, in the video, I, I got a telephone call and had to take that. There was no pause button. Um, so we're, we have these assertions, um, and we can execute all of them at, uh, before, before failing. Um, if any of them fails, the, the method will fail, but we are guaranteed that all of them get checked. And so we'll get a little bit better feedback when we do that. So I'm going to pull up. Let's create our... Um, test package here. Chain at test case, and for the very first one we do, uh, we want to make sure that um, it's a new J unit Jupiter test case, and it'll probably ask us if we want to add J unit to the to the build path, and of course we will. So we're testing the constructor, and the name of that is capital T test constructor. We finish. Yeah, we do want to add to the build path, and I'm going to copy in the test I had before. I might need to do some uh, some imports here. Uh -oh. And that's what I get for copy pasting. It did some ugliness with. Um, with quotes. There we go. Ideally you should never copy paste from a, a PowerPoint or anything like that because they change up your quotes into smart quotes. There we go. I think that gets it. Alright, let's run that and see what happens. There it goes, it passes. So, and let's, before I do that, let's take a look at. Well, there's no. That, there is no failure trace, so we don't don't see any of the specifics of our of our assertions. I forgot about that. Okay, let's do a couple other tests. Particularly, let's look at, um, let's handle how we deal with some ex uh, expected exceptions. So, uh, for one thing, we need to make sure our make is not null. So, here's a test that does that. It has that test, it has a name, and then we do an assert throws where the first parameter is the type of exception we expect, and it's the 
the, ex the exception type dot class gives us the the pr a proper object there. Once again, we have our um, our what we call our lambda style um, call. Um, it's empty parentheses followed by an arrow followed by the code that we are going to um, assert throws. And again, we did all this in CS1, but this is just review. So I'm going to paste that in. And once again, it mucked up the quotes. All right. Let's rerun our tests. And I did have a null make uh, test pass, so that was correct. So here I am calling my constructor with valid values for everything except my make, which I passed in as null. And because my setter properly, um, my private setter properly checks for null, um, now my test is going to pass, of course. Now, we can also check for the specific exception message. If you want to do that, you can. I personally don't, don't do that much. It's, um, you know, I, to me, it's enough that we, um, that we check for the, the, the exception type, um, at least for a legal argument exception. Um, it's enough that we, we check for that type. If you're looking for specific um, messages, though, you can do that. All right, I would like you to go ahead and complete the rest of this. Um, come up with as many um, test cases as you can for the, the constructor. Um, certainly cover every one of the, the uh, exceptional cases like null and, and, and the empty, uh, but also make sure you properly um, handle your border conditions um, like we did in, in, in CS1. In fact, uh, got a minute, let's, let's do that before, before we proper, completely wrap up. Let's look at the year here. So I said the year should not be any uh, any lower than 1970. It was, again, it was kind of arbitrary, but that's that's far enough back in, in, in the past that I think we, we can work with it for our purposes. So it's a border condition situation. We need to um, look at one year prior, look at 1970 itself, and one year past. So let's do a, um, a test for each of those. And I love to copy paste tests. So this is the test should not allow one year below uh, minimum. So we're going to give a correct make, but we're going to give a year of 1969. Let's run that test and see if it works. Yes, we're going to save. All right, that test passes. We should write a valid test. Test should accept. No, that'll work. Should accept minimum year. And we're going to create an automobile. With our minimum year of 1970. Note that for a constructor, calling the constructor like this is um, both our uh, arrange and our act step. So all we need now is just an assert uh, to say that our year, oops, no, can't type. Um, is a correct one. Um, you could do all of this. Um, ah, let's just do that just to make sure. It's a, it's a better, um, it's a stronger uh, setup. So our year is 1970. All right, so that's at our border condition. That passed. And then let's do one more at above our border condition here. Should accept one above minimum year. So we'll do that as 
1971 and run that again. There we go. Saw that test passes. Um, and you should look at border conditions for um, uh, the mileage and, um, and the price as well. Um, see what you can do there. All right. I think that covers everything. Um, according to this, uh, next time on the next class, we're going to talk about version control some. So, um, as always, if you have questions about these things, uh, see your instructor, um, and and we'll we'll do our best to to answer that. All right. Thanks and bye bye.